So use your reason and common sense when you look at pictures of Chad and you look at pictures of Charles. <laughs> uh, was it a physical attraction? Uh, to trade in Charles for Chad? Was that a trade up? No. Oh, no. Look at that. Lori Vallow looked pissed. People were saying that when they saw her in the courtroom yesterday as they were about to read her guilty verdict, um, she didn't really talk to her lawyers. She was standing there. She had her arms crossed, very minimal communication. And honestly, before the verdict even happened, I, I, I think Lori was just pissed because the closing arguments, oh man, I don't know if her lawyers talked with her. I don't know if the lawyers gave her a heads up or maybe they did. And they're like, hey, you know, by the way, we're going to, you know, basically throw Chad under the bus. But in my opinion, not only did they throw Chad Daybell under the bus, but they also ran him over Regina George style, like probably 10 times over and over and over again. Um, I listened to the closing argument, but I didn't listen to it in its entirety. I was at my dentist's office yesterday and I probably listened to about like a third of it. And I started off with who opened the door. Oh my, that's my dog. I started off with um, defense's closing arguments. I haven't listened to the prosecution yet because I'm pretty sure the prosecution, they're going to completely destroy Lori, completely destroy Chad. But I was really surprised at how hard Lori's lawyer went at Chad Daybell. Um, I figured they were probably just going to say things like, oh, you know, Lori was influenced by Chad and Lori didn't really do it. And she didn't really know what she was doing. It was Chad. It was the brother, blah, 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 blah. But the fact that like they were digging at Chad, like they were like, uh, they were insulting him. And I think she was sitting there. She was probably seething and she was probably pissed. I really wish that they would have shown the closing arguments to us. Ah, oh, man, that would have been great. I want to just sit there and just stare at Lori, just sitting there for like, you know, probably like an hour or two hours, however long closing arguments were. And just have her sit there and just marinate and all the stuff that they're going to say about Chad. I think it'd be hilarious. I, 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 I already listened to a third of it. Okay, I'm going to have the transcript up here, though, in case I need to jump around. And we're getting close to the end. So uh, you were asked to be patient and attentive while putting your job, your family, uh, your life on hold. Yep. So right now he's just basically thanking the jury for being here, which is really good. You know, he talks about, okay, you've seen PowerPoints, you've seen evidence. Uh, he talks about why the prosecution gets to do their closing arguments. And then the defense gives her closing and why the prosecution gets to go again is because, oh, it's their burden uh, to prove the, um, the what's it called, beyond reasonable doubt, da, 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 da. And then he starts talking about uh, Lori. Where do we start talking about Lori right here? He's something about beauty school. You know, if you guys ever seen, if you guys ever been on like some weird parts of the internet and you see some really gruesome pictures, crime scene photos and stuff like that. Like I haven't seen any of the photos, like the Murdoch stuff, this stuff, like I haven't seen any of the photos. So for me, it's like easier. I use my imagination when I talk about it. But like for these people, they've been sitting in this courtroom for weeks. You know, they've heard about this case months prior and they saw all the evidence and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's really sad. If you look at the pictures and stuff, I, I bet you like even the jury sitting there, you know, even if you're looking at like charred remains, it's like, geez, I, I wonder what happened to them. But um, hi, Clint, how are you doing today? It's bad enough to have like a third party, like crazy nut job, right? Doing this to your kids. But it's like, he was able to convince the mom. He was able to convince the uncle. Hello, like, do you not have a connection to the kids whatsoever? Apparently the uncle took the kids to like Yellowstone Park, right? Where they had their last like picture venture. But like, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's just, ugh, it's just really weird. Ugh, I don't know. All right, so you've heard a bit about her from her background. Let's go. So you've heard a bit about her background from her sister, her son, her friends. Uh, she was born in 1973 in California. She turns 50 next month. Hold on. The audio was good earlier. I need to boost it up then. Um, I think he just like walks away from his microphone. Let's do 1.8. See how that is. Uh, raised there. Dad, mom, brothers, sisters. Uh, attended schools there. Uh, got married right out of high school. Got divorced. Uh, went to beauty school. Got married again in Texas. Her son Colby, who you met, born and raised in Texas and Arizona. Uh, she worked hard as a single mother. Uh, got married and divorced again. And her third marriage was to Joe Ryan in Texas. Tylee was born. You've heard a lot about Tylee. Uh, she had some medical issues. Children needed protected from hey, her third husband. So a divorce. Uh, court involvement, fourth marriage to Charles Vallow, lived in Texas and Arizona and Hawaii. You've heard about that. Charles had two kids. Lori had two kids. So they adopted a child to have one together. And that was JJ. Kid, five kids uh, between them. Uh, wow, five, five kids five forever. Kids. You heard what that was about. You heard that JJ uh, 
had medical issues when he was born, and uh, and that Charles and Lori were a good fit for him, and uh, they loved him, and they cared for him. So then the story about Lori Vallow, as you've heard, changes dramatically in October of 2018. Uh, who is Chad Daybell? Uh, this she had read some of his end of the world books she knew about some of his sayings uh so i think what people were telling me was that the reason why Lori was interested in chad daybell and end of the world books is because she kind of came from a family that was a little bit religious and not just like your normal typical religious but a little bit more on like the the crazier side religious right i think they were saying that like her dad had some like a little crazy beliefs and so maybe that's what kind of like built her foundation and her proclivity towards like this like cult like mentality shit, right? Immediately the first the first time they met, uh, he told her they were married in previous lives. They had multiple lives, multiple probations. We are archangels. We have other names like Methuselah. Man, here's the thing. Um, I wonder if Chad. I wonder if he actually even believed this or if this is what he did to get into people's pants or to get close to people. Like he took these like minds that were easily moldable and he was like, you know what? You and I in our previous lives, we were husband and wife. We were angels. You were the goddess. You were married to Jesus. Like he took these like people that were really desperate and had no meaning in life and he gave them purpose. Or, you know, I think also he was just trying to get into her pants by making Lori feel really freaking special. Because maybe Lori was having a maybe downfall relationship with her current husband, uh, Charles, at the time. And, you know, she was just susceptible to this crazy shit. You know, imagine someone comes up to you and you're feeling like crap and you feel like you have no meaning or purpose in life and your life sucks or something. You don't have a good relationship with your husband. And also this guy swoops in was like, oh, my, you are the goddess. You are special. Like, oh, God. Ooh, ooh. Audio's good. OK, thanks. And Raphael and James and Elena. Uh, we've been selected to lead 144,000. Our mission on earth is to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. Uh, evil spirits are real. When they possess a body, they need to be cast out. People have light and dark ratings. Uh, and then she and Chad were married in the temple, and Jesus was there. So quite a remarkable... Do we, uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe for Chad's trial, we hear from his ex-girlfriends. I wonder if his ex-girlfriends are going to all resurface and be like, um, excuse me, Chad also told me I was special. I'd also be the leader of the 144,000. Um, Chad also told me that I used to be married to Jesus. Chad also told me that I was like an archangel in the previous life. Like, I wonder if he's going to have like a bunch of ex-girlfriends that are going to come out and say this. And then Lori's going to hear about it. And Lori's going to be like, wait a second. Chad said this to multiple other girls. Rose, what? I'm not that special. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's how I'm envisioning it, but we'll see. Change from the people who knew Lori. Uh, what the heck is going on? Uh, how can how can this be? Uh, so fast forward a year from October of 2018 to November of 2019, one year after meeting Chad, uh, four people are dead. Uh, one of those deaths you don't consider as guilt for this case. That's it's really difficult for jurors to do. Oh, okay. So four people were dead. Um, they're talking about 17-year-old Tylee. They're talking about uh, seven-year-old JJ. They're talking about, I don't know how old was, how was with Tammy? Was she like in her 40s or 50? Tammy Daybell was Chad's wife at the time. And are they referencing to Alex Cox, the brother that died um, from, what do you have, like a pulmonary embolism or something like that? Wait a second. You told me that Charles was killed, but you don't want me to consider it for guilt. Oh, okay. Never mind. Charles. Oh, Charles. Okay. Just kidding. I knew the answer to that. Okay. You just get it. I'm just testing you guys. Uh, but for some other reason, what other reason is there? So the judge gave you an instruction about that. And, and that's, that's difficult. It's difficult for lawyers to figure out. And I, so if you have questions about that, that's a tricky instruction. Uh, Thanks, the three Patrick. others are dead in Idaho. Lori's arrested first as you heard the jail calls and then Chad. Um, so you've now heard about the summary of the indictment, what she's charged with. I talked to you. Uh, weeks ago about pay attention to who does what. Uh, pay attention to a burden of proof that I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to call a witness. My client doesn't have to testify. And you can't hold any of that against me. You can't hold it against her. Uh, because sometimes that just happens in a trial. And so it's not for you to guess who or why. Uh, but to just consider the evidence that's been presented. 
So we, the judge has talked to you about what reasonable doubt means, what presumption of innocence means. Uh, and this is an important job that you have to do. And, uh, and so, again, I, I want to thank you for that. Pretty soon, six of you are going to get bumped. Six times during this trial, you heard my client's voice. Uh, Detective Stubbs, <laughs> Colby Ryan, Summer Shiflet, Chad Daybell, and a podcast. So Colby Ryan, I, I always, I initially had no idea. Um, she does have a older son, Colby Ryan, who's like in, I'm going to say like maybe late 20s now, that did testify. Uh, Colby Ryan, um, Summer Shiflet is Summer Shiflet. Summer Shiflet. Um, is that her sister? Yeah, Summer Shiflet is her sister, youngest sister. Because I think Lori's like, they have, in Lori's household, there's, there are five kids, right? The Alex is like one of the older brothers, but not the eldest. And then Lori is like the second youngest. And then the youngest sister is Summer Shiflet, the one who testified up there. Um, anything else with others? So if you want to remember how she responded, what she said, go to those six pieces of evidence and you can listen to them again in the jury room. So uh, is this case about money, power and sex? So that's the state's theme of the case. I respect their theme and I'd like to I'd like to talk about it. Uh, oh, man, here we go. And this exhibit that was admitted is Kylie buying a car in April of 2019. Charles Vallow is the co-signer. Okay. Charles tells the bank that he's a full-time professional marketer, that he makes $500,000 a year. Charles says this in Exhibit 68A. So in other years, he's, Charles has stated he makes $400,000 a year. That's it. So initially when I was listening to this, I was like, where is he going with this? Is he trying to like throw jabs at Charles? Like, oh, Charles makes so much money. Ha ha. Let's hate on him. Or like, I don't know. I thought he was going to tie it back to like Charles and like maybe drama with like Tylee or something. I, I was very confused initially where he was going with this. Exhibit 66B. Either way, the Social Security money that she'll make from a dead spouse will never equal 400000 or 500000 a year. Okay. Never. So that Social Security money, did Lori, with a spouse who makes 400000 to 500000 a year, really want to kill Charles for money? That, that just doesn't make sense. But here's the thing. She can't be with Charles, you know, Charles making four hundred, five hundred k a year, and then at the same time be with Chad, right? Obviously, if she's going to go for Chad and then drop Charles, Charles ain't going to support her, right? Charles ain't going to give her, you know, she ain't going to benefit from the $400, $500. Unless, you know, maybe they get a divorce and maybe she gets like some sort of like alimony or something. I don't know if they had like a prenup or what, but. The math does not add up there. So. Uh, we never said Lori was good at math. <laughs> so would she leave Charles and go to Chad for money? And what did we learn about Chad and money? <laughs> what According we to Samantha Quilliam, he's an author. Okay. Who has gone bankrupt okay. because he can't sell enough stupid books about. <laughs> I thought he was going to try to respect like Lori's and Chad's um, beliefs, not like really respect, but just be like, oh, yeah, they had these beliefs and they truly believed it. They're very religious. I don't know. But like he was like stupid books. <laughs> like William, he's an author who has gone bankrupt because he can't sell enough stupid books about the end of the world. So his wife, Tammy, who would rather stay home, they're five kids. She has to work at a school for $15,000 a year. And then. Oh, my God. Chad is such a. Oh, my God. What a loser. Poor. I wonder who takes care of their five kids. Jesus. So Tammy has to take care of the kids. Tammy also has to work as well. This freaking Chad can't be selling them stupid books. From an insurance agent, we learned that Chad almost qualifies for Medicaid. Okay. But not quite. So he had to find an insurance plan because he made twenty to thirty thousand a year. So Lori wanted to ditch Charles Ballow, who makes four hundred to five hundred thousand a year, and go to Chad, who makes twenty to thirty thousand a year. Yeah, because Chad made her feel special. Chad made her feel like a goddess. Chad gave her purpose. <laughs> and she wanted to do that for money. That, my math, that just doesn't doesn't add up. So then the state says, well, maybe uh, she killed for power. And this is about power. Okay. So Lori wanted power. So how did that work out, Lori? In the year that Chad convinced her that she was a sexual goddess and a leader of the 144,000 and that she was going to save the world, how many converts did she have? Zero. <laughs> Wait, I thought they, um, I thought they had a couple. 
couple people that followed them. No, do they not? I'm counting a big fat zero. How many converts did Chad have? <laughs> you know, we have to get to 144,000. How many converts did Chad have? I oh, oh, sorry. Lori had zero, but Chad had six. Oh, sorry, I thought he meant both of them combined. Count maybe six. Uh, Melanie Gibb. Okay. Zulema Pastinas, Audrey Baratario, and three from the Singh family. Lori Ballow, Alex Cox, and Melanie Pedro. Jesus. Was Ian Pulowski a convert to the cause? No. David Warwick? Nope. April Raymond? Nope. Colby Ryan? No. Summer Shiflet? No. So this great and wonderful cause of saving the world, uh, getting ready for Jesus to come, we need to gather up the 144,000. And in one year, <laughs> we got six. Chad got six. Lori got zero. So, again, doing some simple math. <laughs> Chad, Chad has 143,994 people left to gather before Jesus comes. So at the rate of six people a year, <laughs> it'll take Chad uh, 24,000 years to get his <laughs> army assembled. So the math is ridiculous. Well, technically, as you start getting more and more people, that'll, they'll probably be word of mouth and they'll probably gather more people. But I think I think he did a really good job at defending his client while at the same time throwing all these jabs at her and both Chad. Oh, that's hilarious. So is this case about sex? Hi, Galaxy. Uh, you want to have sex outside of marriage? You know, go for it. Happens every day in America, unfortunately. So use your reason and common sense when you look at pictures of Chad and you look at pictures of Charles. <laughs> uh, was it a physical attraction? Uh, to trade in Charles for Chad? Was that a trade up? <laughs> oh, no. Like I said, I was half listening to this when I was at the dentist's office, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> I missed this part. Down? Is she falling in love with Chad because of his money? Nope. No. She's reading his books during a vulnerable time in her life. Yep. And this guy is telling you you're a goddess, a sexual goddess, no less. And you're special and amazing and wonderful. And by the way, we've already been married in previous lives, so it's not really cheating. And we... Oh, it's so disgusting. Chad was such a creep. That's the information that I'm gathering, okay? He tells these lies probably to women, make them feel special. And then he says, like, oh, we were married in our previous life, so it's technically not cheating. Like, oh, God, what a creep. Ew, ew, ew. He's so creepy. And I can't believe you fell for it. And also, by the way, we were best friends with Jesus. And so if Jesus approves, then everything's okay. Oh, yeah, get Jesus involved because, you know, if Jesus is involved, then, like, we're all kosher here. So that's quite a pickup line. By Chad yes. to Lori. And it worked. How did that work? Pretty, pretty scary that that pickup line from Chad to Lori would work. So what did the evidence tell you? What were you convinced of beyond a reasonable doubt? Her children are dead. No question about that. But did she kill anyone? And that's where the state concedes. Yeah, these, these people are dead. But did Lori do it? So you listen to 60 witnesses. You received hundreds of exhibits. And there's literally thousands of exhibits you can review that are on those flash drives. So I want to go over some of that. Learned about doing trials over the years is that you will pick up on something that I didn't. And this juror will pick up something that that juror didn't. And why is that? Because we all have our own common bit. sense. So the first witness here in this trial was Kay Woodcock, Charles' sister. Okay. She described Charles and Lori as the all-American family. They were great parents. She trusted her brother, Charles. She trusted Lori. Uh, they were good parents. They each had two kids, then they adopted one together, and it was just perfect. And she told you, as every other witness, something changed in late 2018 or early 2019. Uh, Brandon Bedreau, he testified. No, she married five times. I think she falls from the whole <laughs> Gosh, Charles and Lori were, were great. Uh, my kids played with their kids. I loved that family like my own. Wait, oh my god, Rain, hi! Funny how they had more people willing to raid Area 41 or Area 51. <laughs> um, they have others that have gone into hiding, possibly. But then, all of the end of the world talks ramped up. Oh and god. things got weird. Uh, so, Charles died, I got divorced, I got shot at. Uh, and so, things just got really weird, really quick. Uh, Officer Hermosillo 
what a tough job he has uh, when he had to describe the, the stench, the smell of decaying bodies uh, during a search of Chad Daybell's property. That was, that was pretty brutal. Uh, and what did he tell you? He said Chad Daybell, when the cops showed up, called his lawyer uh, to make sure that the cops could be there. And what's Chad doing? He's outside looking over his shoulder. And then he sped away and got arrested. He sped off? What? Did he think he was going to get away with it? Uh, so when Chad was looking over his shoulder. So again, uh, the kids were, they think the kids were murdered around, was it like September-ish? Around September-ish. Lori goes on like Hawaii. I think she goes to Hawaii with Chad like twice or something. I think they go twice. But it wasn't until all the way in June were they able to recover the children's uh, remains. And I think that's when Chad was finally arrested. What's that inference? That Chad knew what was in his backyard. He knew that time was short for him. So then Detective or, uh, Captain Wilmore, captain at the jail, he, uh, he recorded a phone call Lori made from the jail to Chad when he was at his property. And... Uh, when I listen to this call, it's apparent to me that Lori, that Lori does not know what's in. Ch oh, wait. Um, have you guys heard of this phone call? Oh, I should have listened to it. So there's a phone call that he recorded a phone call Lori made from the jail to Chad. I don't know. Maybe Lori was just playing dumb. That's backyard. But I'm Lori's lawyer, so don't trust me. Uh, listen to it again. So that's the way I hear it. Lori does not know what's in Chad's backyard. She knows her kids are missing. She knows that her kids aren't with her. She knows that they're safe and happy, whatever that means. If that means people are dead. If <laughs> okay, I... I, I love okay, I love it that he initially I got pissed that he says like, oh, she knows that they're safe and happy. But then he says, whatever that means, if that means people are dead, people are safe and happy if they're in heaven. So like, I'm glad that like he acknowledges that like, hey, I'm pretty sure my client knew they were dead. We're safe and happy if they're in heaven. Um, but does she know that Chad and Alex stuffed her kids in Chad's backyard? She didn't care. I mean, she might have known. She may have not known. She may not have wanted to know. She may not have not wanted to care. At that, at that point, she was like, you know, my kids are dead. I don't care what happens to them. So listen to it again. And you make your determination. Oh, that's true. The text. Oh, my God. The text messages are so bad. Uh, she's like, let me know what I can do. Uh, oh, God. It's, oh. I have a video of the text messages. I Do we have like a maybe like a picture of the text messages? Dude, they're so bad. So then we have other witnesses about, uh, uh, and I know weirdness isn't a legal term, but that's the only way I can describe this, all this religious, this religious babble, uh, all about, uh, you've been mar married in previous lives, multiple probations, uh, multiple lives, uh, special missions on earth, uh, light and dark scales, uh, contracts with Jesus or contracts with Satan, um, just a, a lot of stuff that really does not make sense. Um, so you have to sort through that to see, um, again, in America, in America, you can believe how you want, but, uh, you can't go killing people. And so what are they talking about? What's up? What is all this religious talk? Then, uh, Melanie Gibb records, Lori, you'll have a chance to listen to that. That's where Lori says with Chad sitting right there, the kids are safe and happy. And so, uh, does she know her kids are dead? Well, she knows they're not with her. Does she mm -hmm. know that Chad and Alex were out in the backyard together? Remember all the GPS data? Lori's not there. Lori's not in the backyard when Chad and Alex are. She's not coming and going to the Chad's property on those days that the state points out. She's not there. They're calling her. They're texting her. Are they texting about, hey, today's day we're going to... Yeah, because, um, okay, I can't find, like, I want. I wish we had, like, a whole page of all the text messages. Uh, if I dig it, if I could probably find it. But Chad wrote something like, there's a plan being orchestrated for the children. I was shown last night how it fit together. But it's taking it has been taken from my mind, of course. And then, oh, dude. You're doing everything right, my love. The Lord told me she is on track. 
He said to just keep resolving on the telestial issues. So you are un unencumbered. I think that's what he said. Unencumbered and fully free. That is what Chad texted to Lori. She replied that it feels good. Her son, JJ Vallo, was talking to the real Blake. Oh my God, let me. Getting close, dot, dot, dot. I sense he was barely attached to his body, she wrote. You're so incredible in so many ways. Your mission has barely begun, Chad David replies. Lori responds, as long as it ends with you, it's all good. <laughs> These losers didn't even end up together. <laughs> They're separated. <laughs> oh my God. Um, who wrote this? Okay, Chad texts Lori. Do you want me to cause pain yet to those two threes you're riding with? She tells him to hold off. They will be mistake to deal with, but I'll text you if they start acting up and we can zap them. Lori Vallow wrote, what does that mean? Chad says, sounds great. Yes, if they're going to act up, we'll at least give them a reason to scream. I love, cherish, and adore you. The wonderful memories keep coming back. You are mesmerizing. Raphael is one lucky guy. God, what's such losers? How do you talk about, I mean, I'm assuming this is the same when they're saying like, if they're going to act out, we're going to give them a reason to scream. Is that them talking about harming the children while in the same text messages writing, I love and cherish and adore you. Mm, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Oh, 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 oh. These are toe curling indeed. Okay. Sorry guys. Um, let's go back to, to this. Hi Adam. How are you doing today? How's it going? Kill some people. Is that okay with you? We don't know that. Or are they saying, yeah, I'm just running an errand. I'll be back. Do you want uh, a real Coke or a Diet Coke? We don't know the content. I'm sorry, we're a little bit lost. Um, okay. They're calling her. They're texting her. Are they texting about, hey, today's day we're going to kill some people. Is that okay with you? We don't know that. Or are they saying, yeah, I'm just running an errand. I'll be back. Do you want uh, a real Coke? or? A <laughs> should, should I do the Lori Vallow here? <laughs> I used to wear my hair like this. I feel like I can't, I can't wear my hair like this for like another couple months or something. We're just, <laughs> I got to curl my hair a little bit. <laughs> Diet Coke. We don't know the content of those text messages. Unfortunately, we have lots of content of text messages about the James and Elena story. We have lots of that crap, but we don't have any text about today is the day we kill people. So look, look for that. Look for the lack of evidence about... Maybe they called each other, you know? Maybe it wasn't... Maybe not everything was in text. Maybe they just called each other. Who's doing what? Part of your job. That's part of your job to figure it out. And if lack of evidence is, is something that the state hasn't shown, you can't hold that against me. You can't hold that against my client. God, they're like such like wannabe like Bonnie and Clyde's. Like, oh, God. Oh, oh. I don't even think... I don't think Bonnie and Clyde were even this cringe. You hold the lack of evidence against the state because they have the burden of proof. And I didn't make up those rules. The judge didn't make up those rules. We're all following the law. And that's what the law tells you to do. Hi, Janine. And so we have other witnesses. Uh, Chad's blessing on uh, Alex. Uh, you can listen to that if you, if you want to. Listen to that again. Uh, just to me, it's, it's craziness. Uh, opening <laughs> the Yorkie hairdo she's missing a bow tie <laughs> she got a little bow for her the portals of time third creation fourth creation great warriors exalted in the fourth creation hey so when uh, i know this is this is probably really mean but you know fuck Lori. she's a fucking we hate her um someone sent her like a, a hawaii postcard <laughs> with a little like doggy bow tie like attached to it you know or sorry what was it called again a bow like a little bow clip thing could have gone on to exaltation, but came back in the- Write something in the caption like, too bad you'll never visit here ever again. <laughs> was she Miss Arizona? I heard she was like a in beauty patch. I'm not sure what she was, but she was also like a bodybuilder too, right? Fifth creation. In the heck is Chad talking about? Uh, he's the leader of his new church, the Church of the Firstborn. He calls himself a patriarch. Uh, just, just goofy stuff. <laughs> goofy stuff. You hear from other, other witnesses about this uh, religious talk. Um, you hear from Colby Ryan, uh, my client's son. Uh, Lori was a great mom. She did everything to protect us kids. I would never think she'd do anything to harm anyone. She taught us to do good, to follow Jesus. After she met Chad Daybell, she changed. Her beliefs changed. That telephone call that you heard, and again, if you want to hear it again, please do. Uh, just so... 
issue with Lori Vallow, Letitia Stout, is that like there's no sense of contrition from any of them. Lori, you know, you could say that like, oh, you know, she was at some point brainwashed by Chad. She was like brought into this cult. And but now she realized that what she did was wrong. She regrets it. She feels sad, remorseful. It's just like we didn't really get a sense of that, you know? She over here partying it up in like Hawaii telling people, oh, I don't have kids. Oh, one of my kids are dead or like, I don't know, the kids are gone or I don't like, oh, oh, God, like, oh, oh, I don't know. And like even in trial, when you're listening to the phone call between her and her sister, the sister's crying, trying to figure out what happened to the children. And Lori's like lack of like emotional response was just so irritating. Like, oh, God. She was Mrs. Uh, Texas, Mrs. Maternal, Arizona. It's called a tap knot. I thought top knots were for like, uh, is this a top knot? No, I'm thinking like man buns, I think. <laughs> I think this is like kind of similar to like the Ariana Grande hair, right? I think she puts her hair up like this like a lot. Painful. Denmark, hi. Hey, Brandy. That's so painful. All right, we're halfway there. For, for Colby. Um, you heard from April Raymond, her, Lori's friend from Hawaii. Aww. Lori was nice and normal. Uh, she was a friend, a neighbor. We went to church together. And then Lori came back a year or two later for a visit, and she had changed. She talks, talked about demons. She talked about people being possessed. She talked about leaders of the 144,000. She asked me if I would join them and be separated from my children to join them. Oh my god, she actually pitches to someone. Hey, you want to like come join us and like leave the zombies behind? Leave your children behind. They're probably zombies. You know what? Just leave them with their husband. Come join us. Like, oh my god. I could leave my children with their father. And what was April Raymond's response? No thanks. Um, no thanks. <laughs> I might want to be like, no thanks. Like, bitch, you better get the fuck out of my house. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll stay here in Hawaii. But, but uh, good luck to you on your mission. <laughs> good luck to you. Oh, April, you're too polite. You're too polite. You heard from uh, Sydney Shank. A BYUI student hired by Lori for babysitting JJ. Now, if Lori has a plan to kill her kid next week, why go to all the trouble to hire? Eddie, Eddie, thank you so much for the membership. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on the membership. Enjoy your emos and enjoy your little baby corky badge. Oh, welcome, welcome, Eddie. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, Paris Hilton. True. Paris Hilton did do this hairstyle too, right? Yeah, this is like the Shih Tzu, like, Yorkie hairstyle, Paris Hilton, and then, like, Ariana Grande pulls it off really well, though. A babysitter. Why bring the babysitter over and introduce her to JJ and the medicines and the routine and the school? Why check JJ into school if you're going to kill your kid next week? Why do that? Because killers are dumb. <laughs> That's just why. Because Lori didn't have think. a plan. The state wants you to think that this was Lori's plan to kill her kids. But look at exhibit 82A. It's Lori's rental <laughs> for a Rexburg apartment. Sorry, that was on the, <laughs> that was on the tab that was on. Whoop, let me just X that out. Uh, it's where I was reading the uh, text messages. It's dated August 14th, 2019. It's two weeks before she moves to Idaho. She wants to rent in Rexburg. So exhibit, <laughs> 82A is a rental application. She puts on there that she has two kids, Tylee and JJ. She puts on there that she's living on Social Security income. So if her plan was to kill the kids as she got to Idaho, in fact, the state's saying Tylee went missing the same week they got to Idaho. Uh, why list her kids on the rental application? If you're moving from Arizona to Idaho, uh, why not go drop off the kids somewhere else? Why not? Why tell everyone you have two kids? Why enroll them in school? Why hire a babysitter? The only thing that makes sense to me is that she didn't have a plan. She wanted to be with Chad. They were obviously having an affair. Chad told her all the time about dark and light things. But there was no plan by Lori to kill her kids, or else she wouldn't have done that. Uh, so, she did she lie about it? Yeah, she did. When people started showing up, hey, where are your kids? And notice that she lied. Well, they're in Arizona. Well, they're in with Grandma. Uh, they're at a movie. That's right. They're at a movie, uh, Frozen 2. Um, 
So all lies. So why was she doing that? To protect Chad, her lover. And herself and her brother. Her Hi, Ashley. Eternal in how many worlds companion. Uh, how can someone have that much control over you? And we've we've heard about that that over over the years, haven't we? The reason and common sense of people just go out the window sometimes when religious principles are involved. Mm. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to us, does it? Um, uh, I don't know. It's more than that, man. And more, it was more than common sense and reason that went out of their windows. <laughs> it was like their entire brain matter. Goodbye. We heard evidence from the FBI um, that. One thing the FBI pointed out is that Lori did not get life insurance for the children. Okay, so they're saying she's cunningly crafting a plan to knock off all these people. Wouldn't How about go get an insurance policy on the kids? No proof of that, is there? So she didn't go get an insurance policy on her children. Yeah, so apparently um, Lori started reading Chad's book. I don't, how did even she, how did she even like find out about Chad's books though? Apparently she started reading his books and then like, I, yeah, maybe just, she did meet him at a book signing or something. Um, or like maybe what, one of his like, uh, lectures, but like, how did she get a hold of Chad's book? Was it in her algorithm on Amazon shopping cart or something like that? Like <laughs> how the heck did she get a hold of it? Well, does that tell you maybe she was not planning to kill her kids or else she would have gone. People do that all the time, right? I'm going to go get insurance on someone and then kill him and then I'll get a bunch of money. And that is no insurance policies on the two children. Um, we heard from the FBI about who's out in the backyard. Uh, well, Chad and Alex are out in the backyard, not Lori. Um, and we heard from Summer Shiflet, uh, similar to Colby Ryan, just a real touching, touching witness. Um, known Lori her whole life. I'm Lori's younger sister. I'm close with Lori. She would have never done anything like this. Uh, that conversation is recorded. So if I've misstated anything, listen to it again. I have supported you your whole life. But Chad has lied to you. Chad has deceived you. She also talked about, told us about who Alex was. Alex was an adult man stuck in a 16-year-old brain because of a car accident, a traumatic brain injury. That's who Alex was. Um, it says they met at like a spiritual conference in 2018. Spiritual conference, 2018. At the conference, Chad said, if you had this Holy Ghost experience testified to you, you're on the right path. Messages are handed over to the police appears to show Daybell writing a love story to Lori. <laughs> Romantic novel of sorts. <laughs> Their names were disguised as James and Elena in the messages. Oh, God. One text says, Friday morning, October 26th, driving south on the freeway, a voice said, dot, 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 you will meet an extraordinary woman today who will change your life forever. When their hands touched, he felt a shock pass through him and his heart started beating fast. Elena was gorgeous and vivacious. James was a little intimidated, yet honored that she would talk to him. Yeah, he was probably surprised that something like... <laughs> Someone like Lori would talk to him. <laughs> this is a guy that had to lie to women to get girls. Okay. Oh, God. Was there any other, do you guys, is there any other cringe messages I want to read to you guys before? Um, they were okay for now. Uh, Lori Summer told us was a good mother. She loved her children. She took care of them. She protected them from abuse. She never talked about zombies. She never talked about 144,000 or other weird stuff. Uh, she never talked about saving the world. Never talked about light and dark ratings. She taught her children good things. Kylie and Lori were cute together. Lori would never kill her kids. Never agree for someone else to kill her kids. That's what Summer told you. So then we dove into more evidence. Um, what was the cause of death? Uh, uh, so evidence that, that I'm sure you have notes on. I'm sure the photos are burned into your brain that you'd wish would go away, but a poodle we'll, do we'll, those photos will be with you for a while. They're hard to, hard to delete that stuff. Um, we, we talked about a hair in on tape on a piece of duct tape. 
So uh, JJ's body had tape wrapped around it, and one of Lori's hairs was found on that duct tape. So is that a smoking gun? No, not at all. And why not? Because that decomposition fluid was also in that bag. The pajamas were also in that bag. Kids' socks were also in that bag. A kid's blanket was in that bag. And so to say Lori's a killer because they found a piece of her hair on duct tape, that that's not true. I would hope all of you, your mothers, all of all of you who are mothers, I would hope that your hair is somewhere on your kids' pajamas, your kids' socks, your kids' blanket. It probably is. That doesn't mean that she's a killer. We talked a lot about uh, about Tammy's death, and uh, and Lori was in Missouri when she was shot at by either a paintball gun or a real gun. Uh, we don't know which because we didn't find any paintball residue. I thought they did know. I thought that initially Tammy reported that she thought it was a guy with a paintball gun shooting at her, but then they found out that Alex had a real gun. Um, and like, didn't he like get like, didn't he go somewhere nearby and got like the whole like outfit and shit like that? And we didn't find any bullets. So the evidence is we just don't know. We spent a lot of time talking about what we. This guy sounds like a man who would do a, who'd voice a crime show in the 1950s. Yeah, he's got a great voice. Don't know. Uh, and the evidence is clear that Lori was in. Hawaii when Tammy died. And what did Tammy die of? Well, natural causes at first, then asphyxia second. And so what what did the doctor tell you? Yeah, so what uh the paramedics when they arrive uh at Tammy's, they thought it was odd that her mouth was foaming. Uh she had like foam in her mouth and I think she had like some sort of like a little bit of bruising, right? Well, I talked to the police as part of my investigation as to what, what they think happened. That's, that's okay. That's what a doctor's supposed to do, get the history. So the doctor gets the history and says, well, maybe it was asphyxia instead of natural causes. And then uh, the doctor said, well, yeah, I guess it could have also been seizures because she, because Tammy had been on Prozac for a long time. And seizures are a side effect of long-term use of Prozac. Where are Chad's kids? He's got five kids. He killed the mother of his kids. I wonder what the kids think about that. So that death is up in the air. Is she, was she even murdered? Is it a natural death? Um, Chad, to believe that it's, that she was murdered, uh, Chad is so smooth that he convinced a county coroner, a county assistant coroner, or deputy coroner, and- Nah, he could read Lord of the Rings to me. <laughs> I'll listen to that every night. And a police, and a, another policeman that it was all natural causes and convinced his kids because remember the kids showed up oh my what happened to mom oh and chad convinced them all sorry kids uh mom died in her sleep were the kids adults okay, so um just uh just just evidence you're being asked to convict laurie on killing tammy when laurie's in hawaii uh you're asked you're being asked to convict Lori for killing Tammy when do we even know for sure it's a homicide? Has that been, have you been convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that it's even a homicide? Oh my God, I'm reading this article right now and look what we see. <laughs> look at this pet man's commercial. Oh no, where's the dog with the bow tie and the hair? <laughs> it was perfect. No, it went away. There's a little cute dog with a little bow tie. Wait, there, that little doggy right there. Oh no, that's, that's a little, oh, I can't remember. Can't rewind this? What a stupid ad is this? Okay, just kidding. Anyways, that was funny. So, uh, we hear from the neighbors, good folks, uh, Alice Gilbert and Todd Gilbert, uh, nice people who who say, uh, yeah, Chad told us that his wife Tammy was going to die before she hit 50 years old. And so if if Chad had told that to the nice neighbors, who hung out with Tammy, wouldn't Tammy had also known about her husband's prophecy? Wouldn't Tammy, wouldn't that explain why Tammy increased her life insurance? Not because she, not because Chad was manipulating her to get more life insurance, but because Tammy, what do we, what do we know about that? That, that Tammy was still with Chad, even you know, I didn't, uh, am I remembering this correctly? Um, didn't 
Chad changed, was it, wasn't it Chad that changed life insurance policy a little bit before Tammy passed away? And then apparently he tried to like claim it like two days after she passed. Am I remembering that correctly? Is anyone here to correct me on that? How nutty Chad was. She was still there. She still had five kids with him. She went bankrupt with him trying to sell his stupid books. And <laughs> she's still there with him. Again. She's still loyal to him. So her prophetic husband who says, dear wife, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, I heard pathetic husband. <laughs> it's his prophetic husband. I, I don't I heard pathetic husband. I will go with pathetic. Next year, would that cause her to increase her life insurance so that her kids could be provided for? Prove to me that that's false. There's no proof that that's false. Then after the nice, uh, oh, and the Lori's statements are also introduces evidence with the Gilberts as well. So if you want to listen to that, you can. Um, then we hear from Audrey Baratario. And um, I got a little excited during that testimony. So if I offended any of you, I apologize. Oh. Um. Oh, God. No, how do I go away? Ah, uh, no, the picture was here. There's no free. There's no free. The Daybill kids, they, they look like they're all adults. Um, I don't know if you guys can see back there. There's five. One, two. Yeah, they, they all look pretty old. Okay, I thought they were like maybe kids or something. Uh, that testimony, uh, I thought the witness was making up stuff. And uh, so, so I got a little excited. But what did we learn from Audrey? Um, well, she's married to Jesus. That's kind of cool. Um, I'll follow you to five different states, but I'm really not a follower. Um, and uh, I don't like it when my good friend Lori tells me for no reason that she's going to kill me. Uh, and I'm not going to testify about that under oath uh, because I'm scared. So just, uh, again, more, more weird stuff. Um, Chad had been Methuselah in the Old Testament. He had been James in the New Testament. I moved to Missouri because that's where Jesus is coming. And by the way, I'm married to Jesus. I moved to Missouri because uh, that's where Adam and Eve lived. Um, and uh, so you just have to sort through that and figure out what's... Do I miss Cousin Eddie? <laughs> I didn't miss Cousin Eddie to begin with, okay? <laughs> I think Cousin Eddie is uh, still rotting in prison, eh? Chad has five kids. They spoke on a 48 hours interview. They believe their father was innocent. Uh, released in July 2022. The articles that I have right here are... La, 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 blah, 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 blah. Um, this is 2021. Let's see. Yeah, so these are the five children. Grown. They said they're all in shock when their father married Lori Vell two weeks after the mother died. It was really hard and it surprised us, she told CBS. It was clear that there was already an emotional connection. As whether she thought their father was having a fear, she replied emotionally, yes. And she said they accepted how their father's hasty remarriage looked to outsiders is very socially inappropriate choice to make. But socially inappropriate doesn't mean something bad happened. I mean, I get it. Like, you're, you're defending your dad. You know your dad. You grew up with him probably all your life, right? Um, so I don't give them shit for defending their dad. But at this point, with, like, all the evidence coming out and, like, especially what happened to Tylee and JJ, oh, there's no way they have to be... I hope they're not still supporting their dad. Ugh. I don't know if they are or not. Credible and what's not credible with these witnesses. What is real and Thanks, Lisa. what is imaginary. Yeah, I remember reading that. I just wasn't sure I was correct or not. We heard from witnesses about uh, texting and all the texting back and forth. Uh, Chad keeps telling Lori what's been revealed to him. Lori keeps asking Chad what's going to happen next. Because uh, he knows he's the equal to Jesus. He's act Chad has actually been to heaven and come back. And so Chad knows everything. Uh, when Chad's naming of evil spirits doesn't work, oh, it's because another one's there. When uh, sometimes Chad, yep, someone's close to 0%. And then uh, another time, yep, this person's close to 99%. So even, even Chad's making it up as he goes. That's so stupid. Um, okay, this is something similar to what I read. Yeah. Recalling the day Chad Daybell came to the school district, Yancey said it was unusual in her experience for someone to come that soon after a death to claim someone's life insurance. 
When Yancey told him he needed a death certificate, Chad Daybell said he'd already submitted for eight of them. Yancey has helped employees, family, uh, employee families 15 times with life insurance, testified that she's never heard of someone ordering eight death certificates. The most she said was three. <laughs> he really needed that money, man. They had to get that Amazon wedding ring, that Amazon dress. Um, as a part of the job, Yancey said she conducted the benefits meeting where plans were discussed along with life insurance policies. Tammy Dabo made a change to her life insurance plan in September of 2019, increasing it to the maximum amount, which was five times her salary and added additional option. Wait, so when Tammy Dabo passed away, does, does the police not get notified that like, hey, by the way, like the life insurance policy was increased like right before she was about to die? Or not right before she did die. Both Tammy and Chad signed the necessary form because she elected spouse coverage. The total amount was then 130K. When she was first hired by the school district in 2017, she only elected for the minimum amount of 10K in life insurance. Uh, Wednesday would have been Tammy Dable's 53rd birthday. Oh, poor Tammy. Remember, if 0% is where people die, or if 100% is where people die. I got, I got that mixed up. Here's a chart that works, says Chad. This is when my friend's wife died. My neighbor died. George Bush. Huh? Stan Lee. Uh, <laughs> so Chad makes references to Stan Lee, Marvel comic, right? Also makes reference to Harry Potter. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, my God. Chad? Chad and Letitia. I, I wonder if they're, like, trading letters or something like that. Letitia making reference to Twilight, Tupac. Chad over here making references to Harry Potter, Marvel. Oh, my God. They would make such good friends. <laughs> they could talk about their fantasy lives together. And Lori could just sit there being third wheel, getting all jealous. Uh, I wanted to read. It was something about Chad living on the life insurance money. Did I just get clickbaited? Maybe it's around here somewhere. Who's this? Wing Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> Leviosa, not Leviosa. Uh, so what's what's going on in Chad's brain? Uh, Do we well, want to know? You and I wouldn't believe it, would we? But some people do. Haven't we seen in history uh, that some people follow uh, re religious leaders when it doesn't make sense to us? Uh, so... Was it proven who killed Charles? Yes, it was Alex. Yep, it was definitely Alex. Um, and Lori involved as well, I would say. It was a little too sketchy. Uh, so it says that Chad was living off of Tammy Daybell's two life insurance policies, which totaled 430 k Ugh. Ugh. But you can't consider that for guilt. That's kind of tricky, huh? You can't consider that for guilt on the other three, but for some other reason. Was it proven who killed Tylee? No, but Alex and Chad were at her grave site in Chad's backyard. Alex's fingerprints were on her, the tools. Chad had said, Tylee doesn't like me. He had told that to people. So... What if Chad and Alex were also secret lovers as well? Because I'm like thinking, like, how did how did how did Alex get sucked into this? Like, was it really like because of his sister? He wanted to impress his sister that badly. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Chad and Alex had a thing on the side too. Maybe Chad was also whispering sweet nothings into Alex's ears, telling him that he used to be a goddess in his former life. <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing Chad and Alex on Tylee. Hi, did Taxi. They prove that Lori directed it. No, he wasn't love with Lori. Ooh. Of the 15,000 texts that you have in evidence, show me one where it says, from Lori, so when are you killing Tylee? Was it proven who killed JJ? No, but uh, Alex and Chad were at his gravesite in Chad's backyard. Oh, yeah, Casey Cat. Oh, man, there was a text exchange when Lori found out that she wasn't getting Charles's, li was it life insurance money or something? She was like, I thought I was going to get it, but I guess he changed to someone else, maybe his sister or something. Yeah, that was hilarious. Oh, man. Good for Charles. Cat, thank you so much for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
No, Alex said if natural causes, uh, Nate from uh, Idaho East News says no meaningful way caused the heart issue that causes death. Yeah, they deemed his uh, to be like, uh, it was like pulmonary, what did I say earlier? Some pulmonary thing. Uh, and they said it was like natural causes, but I don't know. Jesus said, I mean, honestly, like, why would they? Uh, nah, just, I'm not going to even go down that line of questioning. Jesus says that we must not harm any of the little ones or it'd be better to tie a a millstone around her neck, therefore drowning. Sorry, I don't remember the exact verse. Jesus, da, 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 no harm. He died the day after Tammy was exhumed. Seems sus to me. Oh, I mean, it could just be like, you know, some divine justice. <laughs> I see I arrived just in time to listen to Lori's lawyer calling his client a clueless loser. I love now. Dude, she, he went hard at uh, her and him earlier too, but we got a couple more minutes left. We got like, what, 10 minutes left. Oh, man. Chad got in a scratch fight. Remember that testimony? Chad got in a scratch fight with JJ the night before. Scratch fight? Maybe that could explain the scratches on JJ's neck. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. And, you know, the way he says, you can tell that he doesn't even believe it as well. So they were saying that, like, um, they found scratches on JJ's neck. And it's going to be really sad, but they think it's because when JJ had the bag over his head and it was wrapped with duct tape, possible that he was trying to claw his way and try to get it off oh my god but you know the lawyer is trying to give a different possibility but i feel like the way he said it he doesn't even believe it himself he's just like yeah you know maybe they had a scratch fight oh. that testimony chad got in a scratch fight with jj the night before maybe that could explain the scratches on jj's neck so witnesses described this scratch fight the hell is a scratch fight who gets into a scratch fight with a kid Unless they're like a PDF or something. I don't know. That to me is like super sus. Um, so they cremated Alex. And how about uh, JJ's burial site? That Alex was only out there. What was it? 17 minutes? Is that what the FBI guy said? That Alex was out there for 17, 17 minutes on that day. Alex died of heartbreak because Chad married Lori. Not <laughs> you guys are distracting me. <laughs> was it 17 minutes? Is that what the FBI guy said? that Alex was out there for 17, 17 minutes on that day. So certainly not enough time to dig a meticulous grave and bury a child, find a board from the garage, find rocks that lined up perfectly. Certainly not enough time for Alex to do that on his own. So I'm guessing he had help from Chad. And of the 15,000 texts that you have in evidence, show me one where Lori's part of that conspiracy. When are you killing JJ, by the way? There is no such text. Well, you know, I, I know he doesn't believe what he's saying. He's just arguing for the sake of his client, but you don't have to explicitly say it. We have 15,000 of them, remember? So, why, why can't people escape religious cult figures? Why can't they break out? Why can't they break away from that mind control? The promises are marvelous to some people. They sound like stupid gibberish to the rest of us. Uh, there are examples, you all know of examples, of people uh, committing suicide because their religious leader told them to. And, and you just have to keep asking yourself, why can't people escape? Why can't Lori escape and get back to her good mom life? Lori is not a leader of Chad's new church, the Church of the Firstborn. Lori. I don't even know if I even count Chad as a good manipulator. I don't think so. He's just a cringe loser who just made her feel special. But like, is he a good manipulator? I just feel like his victims were just people that were just very, I don't know. They probably didn't have much going on in their life, you know? They just needed to hear that there was someone out there that thought they were special. But I don't know if he was like a good manipulator. So. Oh, wait, I, I read that already. Oh, my gosh. Cat, I read that already. Yes, uh, I failed to. I'm way behind. Lori's. Did it just play twice? I don't know. I hope you didn't donate twice. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Lori's a good manipulator, not Chad. <sighs> Lori. Lori. Oh, God, Lori. Probably the manipulation of her brother. Because I feel like, I don't know, I don't know if I, do you guys buy that she was manipulating Chad? Or do you think she was just like eating up everything Chad said? 
Because I could see her being like manipulated sort of by him. And then she in turn would go manipulate her brother. I could see that. Once to testify of Jesus. You heard her on her podcast. She wants to tell the world how much she loves Jesus. She wants to tell you that she personally met him on more than one occasion. But is, Ch- is Lori a leader or is she a follower of Chad? She so wants to be a leader, but she's not leading anyone. She's following Chad. She thinks Chad is following Jesus, but he's not. He's unfortunately being led by the storm. Not the first guy to be led by the storm. Uh, so, uh, Chad, you'll see in the text, Chad, what about this? What about that? What should I do? Move to Idaho? Lori has never lived in Idaho. She's never lived in a cold place. Uh, She's always lived in warm places like California, you heard, Arizona, Texas, Hawaii. But, Chad, you want me to move to one of the coldest places in Idaho to be near you? Okay, I'll do it. God, she was just so desperate. Lori sees Chad as if Chad is Jesus. Lori tells people she's seen Jesus, but yet she still follows Chad. Uh, Janine's... Janine says, yes, I think Lori and Alex started the offing spouses before they met Chad. Um, I think she met Chad in 2018. Charles reported Lori to the police at the beginning of 2019. Charles was then subsequently murdered a couple months later. Was it in July? I think. At that point, she had already known Chad for like almost a year. I think it all started with Chad. It all started with Chad and the three of the dum-dums got together and then they start concocting this batshit crazy plan. Do I have my timelines wrong? <laughs> Lori was big bad. The lawyers threw Chad the storm under the bus. <laughs> Listen, I said he threw they threw her they threw Chad under the bus and then they resurrected Chad's body, okay? They pulled him up. And they ran him over 10 times, Regina George style. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be like one or small digs. It was like, again and again and again and again. And Lori's just sitting there by a simmering man. Or a simmering. Uh, yeah, Law and Crime, or was it Court TV? I don't remember. Uh, one of the reporters said that uh, Lori stood there. Didn't really talk to her lawyers. Didn't really interact with them on verdict day. And then, you know, she got up. Had her arms crossed. Like this, I stand there feeling like a loser. Her lawyers are getting tipped for sure. Listen, her lawyers have better things to do, okay? I believe they're public defenders. They're like, peace out, Laura. I'm doing, I got other clients to defend. Blessings are being handed out like flies with some of the testimony. What does that even mean? I bless you. Oh, she tried to off her first husband using Alex, though. He died from. What? He died from injuries incurred by Alex assaulting. Why? I don't know if I heard about that, Janine. Are you talking about uh, Tylee Ryan's dad? What? Tylee's dad was assaulted, attempted murder by Alex. I had no idea. What? Is there an article on that? Can you? Is there an article? Um, Tylee Ryan dad. I didn't know if he... Let me see. I'll look into it. No, I bless you. Well, if you're going to bless me, then I'm going to bless you. What What does Brandon Pedreau even mean when he says that? That the religious aspects of this group is so intense that common sense has vanished. So uh, groups who actually do follow Jesus, they do good things, right? Wait, no way. They tased him and tried to kidnap him? Wait, what? What, what was this? Okay, January 21st, 2021. This is law and crime, okay? Arizona doubling down on how Lori Vallow's third husband, Joseph Ryan, died. He passed from natural causes. Oh, did she collect life insurance from him? Oh, my God. Do you think this was a woman that tried collecting life insurance on, like, her husband's when they would pass? She tried, like, have a history of this? They determined the death from a heart issue, arteriosclerotic, cardiovascular disease. It's straightforward, uh, linked to a convoluted case, da-da-da-da. I don't see anything about kidnapping and tasting. <laughs> Maybe we're not there yet. Okay, hold on. 
Uh, we have Alex shooting Charles Fallow. Okay. Tammy Davell. Audio recordings indicate Vallow wanted to murder her third husband, but the findings that Joseph Ryan died of a heart issue will close one piece of the story. Ryan's ugly history of the Vallow's family shaped the broader narrative. I don't know. There's an audio recording here. Uh, also, in this doc, also in this doc, five-year-old Tylee Ryan, after saying how much she likes visits her dad, Tells her therapist she was scared of overnights with her father, Joseph Ryan. She said because he molested me and Colby. Lori Vallow then walks in and Tylee turns to Lori. I told her. Oh. The article ends there. First, Tylee's health was, has improved. She seems to be doing well. Leslie Smith, her therapist, has raised concerns about the level of trauma Tylee experienced at the hospital and the stress she has continual experience throughout this conflict. In light of all this, Tylee appears to be resilient and happy about the visits with her father, according to Dr. to Ms. Smith. Ooh. So, may, I don't know. Maybe Lori is, uh, has always been. This is from July of 28, 2008, by the way. They lied and said he was a pedo. Jesus. I saw a clip of Alex Cox doing a stand-up talking about tasing his ex-brother-in-law in the groin for being a pedo and that he thought it was the right thing, but it was a felony. Oh, I don't know. I, ugh. Ugh. I need to hear more about this. Yikes. Seems like the law and crime article was kind of like alluding to the like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe Lori Vallow was telling Tylee to lie to the authorities. Yikes, I don't know. Yeah, maybe Lori Vallow has had a history of this. Of this conniving manipulation. And now, you know, now that she's found her partner in crime, Chad, oh, God. Oh, you pasted the clip. I can't see it, unfortunately. Um, are you in my Discord? Can you post it in Discord if you are? I can't see it. The link is not posted. I don't know why YouTube is... I don't know the link no worky. Um yeah. I think the either YouTube or maybe by the bot I have just like deletes links or something. I don't know. It's weird. I can't even see it. If Lori had five husbands, is she whacked the other four for life insurance? I don't know. Um I don't know if her other husbands were okay. Husband number one, she married when she was young, was 18, right? Husband number two, don't remember. Number three, oh, no, you know what? Number one or number two is where she had her first son. Number three is where she had uh, Tylee. Number four, that's Charles Vallow. That's where she adopted JJ. Yeah, there's a family tree that I found. I don't think it really says much about husband one and two. You can only post links in the chat if you're a mod. The link is there for me. Really? I don't see the link. <laughs> wow. Is it on YouTube? Can I just like search the title maybe? Uh, if you're on Discord, I don't know if you joined Discord or not. If you join our Discord community, you can post it in there. If not, um, if it's like a YouTube video, or you can just give me like the keywords and I can try to search it myself. Jesus never killed anyone. He blessed everyone. All right. Sorry, guys. We went a little bit off row. Uh, let's see. Brandon Bordeaux. Okay. What, what does Brandon Bordeaux even mean when he says that? That the religious aspects of this group is so intense that common sense has vanished. So, uh, groups who actually do follow Jesus, they do good things, right? Jesus yep. never killed anyone. He blessed everyone. Yeah, seems he, like he it. He taught people how to get along. Jesus taught how to be respectful, how to be helpful. Uh huh. If someone wants your coat, give them your coat and your cloak. What? If someone wants, if someone wants you to walk a mile, walk two miles with them. However, you can help someone do that. Treat people like you want to be treated. Judge people like you want to be judged. Since you're a sinner. Man, I could just imagine the lawyer getting really emotional and Lori just sitting there simmering and stewing and like just thinking like, oh my God, my lawyer is so pathetic. I don't know. I, I can imagine Lori thinking that. She's probably angry as heck. Be kind and forgiving to sinners. If someone has offended you, forgive them. 
That's the Jesus that we know. That's the Jesus that Lori knew. That's the Jesus that Lori taught her children about. That's the Jesus that Lori so believed in right. until she met Chad Babo. Found it. Thank you. So on your verdict form, there's not a box to check for, did Lori have an affair? And we spent a lot of time on that issue, remember? On the verdict form, there's not a box to check to see if a crime was committed in Arizona. Can you guys, um, can you guys link the videos in Discord? Hi, Karen. How are you doing today? Yeah, if there's anything you guys want to react to, uh, link it in the Discord for me. And Peach, thank you. I did find the video. How many weeks did we spend on that issue? It's very specific, your verdict form. Did she kill? Did she plan to kill and steal? Not kill or steal, but kill and steal. And the proof has to be beyond a reason. I think he's crying because he doesn't want to defend this bitch anymore. <laughs> well, doubt. If it's not, the law says you must find her not guilty. No one here thinks Lori actually killed anyone. That's why she's charged with conspiracy. Because they think someone else did the killing. So they want you to be convinced that she's part of this plan. That there's a specific plan to kill on certain days. So if you find her guilty, will that bring the kids back? Nope. If you find her not guilty, will that bring the kids back? Nope. So you can't be concerned about that. What you are concerned about is following the law and following the evidence. Follow the law and the lack of evidence. This case It is not about multiple lives or multiple creations. It's not Okay. Now I'm I'm like very convinced that like in order to be a really good lawyer, you have to be really good at public speaking. Remember when Terry Sanderson's lawyers went and did their closing arguments or their opening arguments? And I was like I was like, you know what? Like maybe they're just really nervous and maybe they're just like, I don't know, they're probably just nervous and stuff, and maybe public speaking is not their thing. But dude, I've listened to so many lawyers so far and them doing their closing arguments opening, they're just so passionate about it. They're just so good at it. I don't know. Maybe it's different when you're not doing like a criminal trial. Maybe like you're not as passionate because you're just like doing like civil cases and you're just like, oh, you know, who hit who? Who owes money to who? Right. Dude, I don't know. Terry Sanderson's lawyers, dude, their closing arguments are so bad. Not about zombies. Not about being a leader of the 144,000. If there's anything we learned about a storm, it's that you hide from a storm. You seek shelter from a storm. Yeah, it's a storm. That's what you teach your kids. And that's what you know. Her sister and her son, those two who testified about her in this courtroom, have known her the longest. They would never imagine she would be guilty as charged. She spent her whole life protecting her children. Thank you again. Oh, geez. Okay, um, I found the clip, but I don't want to... It's eight minutes long. I don't know how, how much of a cringe we want to deal with. Uh, let's see, transcript. My name is Alex Cox. When I was in eighth grade, I also learned my real name was also my porn star name. Okay. Uh, let me turn the audio down for this one. I don't want our ears to get blasted. Let's see. You guys doing? Nice. You guys look good. Maybe wish I was straight. Oh, this audio is so bad. <laughs> oh, good. Um... Okay. I'll confess to you guys. Have you ever had something that you knew was the right thing to do, but it turns out later on it was a felony? This is a true story. I thought that my ex brother in law was a PDF. So I took a stun gun, I discharged it right into his nutsack. And so they arrested me here and they held me out here in jail. I learned something when I was in Maricopa County Jail. I learned that I was the only white guy in there that did not consider crystal meth one of the four major food groups. Another last guy here. Anyway, so while I was in jail, I had a religious experience. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I almost Jesus amendments and Jesus Garcia is wrong. Jesus was not born in Bethlehem. He was born in El Salvador. Okay. Um, 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 um. I, I don't want to listen to this. The audio is really bad. Uh, did she talk about Lori at all? I got her underwear. Wait, who's this? Oh, is he talking about Lori? 
My brother was a DJ. Backstage, page, backstage passes. Never met a celebrity. She seemed a little confused, but again, she didn't know it was, I got her underwear. It was like a little aloe vera lining. Okay, what am I reading? <laughs> Talk about Lori. Okay, that's it. We're done. Yikes. Hi, Bleep. How are you doing today? Yeah, PDF is the uh, the workaround. You know, because sometimes YouTube don't be lacking some certain words. Uh. He's using the word storm an awkward amount of times considering. It's one thing to joke, but to realize it was real. But here's the thing. He said that, like, I thought. I thought that my, I don't know, the way he said it doesn't mean, like, this is a true story. I thought that my ex-brother-in-law was a PDF, so I took a stun gun and discharged it. So it seems like, after all that, the ex-brother-in-law really wasn't one. Because then he talks about going to jail and stuff like that. But he said, I thought. Wouldn't he just be like, oh, I knew my ex-brother-in-law was a PDF. And that's why I took a stun gun and discharged it right in his nutsack, right? There's a reason why he didn't say, I knew. So I don't know. Maybe that is, maybe we're looking... I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe we're looking into it a little too much, but Lori was in my area. Ooh! Lori was in my area about like 15 to 20 minutes away. Independence, uh, Montana. Wait, hold on. M.O. Is M.O. again? Is it Montana? I always mix it up. No, Montana is M.N., right? Or is that Minnesota? Mi Missouri. Missouri. M.O., right? Missouri. Did I get it right? This whole lot is after Jesus, like no tomorrow. He's like, I got to call pest control. We're getting carpenter. Oh, we're getting ants in the house. Uh, we just hired uh, pest control to do a little bit of spraying on the exterior. But I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want people spraying my yard. Because like, I don't know. I get a little bit concerned with the dogs and stuff like that. Lori's son. Uh, I saw an article that Kylie said that it was her and her brother. But yeah, I don't know if I... Um, all the sudden actually saying that as well if you guys have a link to that that'd be great the kids are grown last interview said they support chad he's being framed i don't know maybe they changed their mind now they kind of just went silent on it right yeah kobe ryan said uh, joseph ryan did things to him i think you guys have an article on that by any chance gonna have them put a barrier look around the place you put a barrier around the windows oh yeah i hope it goes well all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. I know this is kind of like a random uh, Saturday stream. I wanted to watch both closing arguments, but I have like a lot of yard work to do. Uh, I got some yard work to do and then I'm going to head out, take my dogs out as well. And then, yeah, I got some weed whacking, weed whacking to do in my yard today and in the front. So uh, thank you so much for hanging out. If you guys miss any part of the stream, um, I'll have the video live.